Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, back now to the war of words and potentially much more between the United States and North Korea. The Trump presidency has, of course, inspired all manner of parody, comedy and drama. Now it seems remarkably close in a new novel about a fictional, unnamed sociopathic president declaring war on North Korea. The only way to stop him is a conspiracy in the so-called deep state, that supposed combination of governments and secret services. So far, so entertaining, except Donald Trump and certainly some of his advisers appear to believe there is such a conspiracy in the deep state. And I'm joined now by the author of that novel, Jonathan Friedland, and from New York by the Trump supporting commentator, Anne Coulter. Jonathan Friedland, just lay out, I mean, who is the deep state conspiracy in your fiction and how close to the, the reported reality is it? The book is called To Kill the President, but it charts the dynamics between his chief of staff and his defence secretary, the president's unnamed, it's a novel, it's fiction, but these two men are good, loyal patriots who reach the reluctant and very glum conclusion when the president in the middle of the night unleashes a nuclear strike against North Korea, as it happens, even though this book was written long before any of these current events, uh, they reach the conclusion that he poses a threat not only to America, but to the world. And as such, they wrestle with where their duty lies. Is it actually... <clears throat> ultimately, to remove this man who is posing such a mortal danger to the Republic and to the rest of humanity. And they reach, reluctantly, the conclusion that that's where their duty lies. And so what would normally be the, the enemies of democracy become the heroes? So it's an odd situation that arises where liberals and opponents of uh, this president find themselves rooting for, not in the extreme situation depicted in my novel, but find themselves rooting for figures, unelected generals, intelligence chiefs, in the case that's ongoing, the FBI director, they're hoping that actually these characters, in the shadows normally, will somehow produce the goods that can remove from office a president they regard as a danger. And is this your wishful thinking and that of other liberals? As it happens, my own personal view is that no, if you have a democratically elected head of government, the way you remove that head of government is through other democratic leaders. I think people in Congress, elected Congress people, Republicans in the House and Senate, should do their constitutional duty and impeach and remove this president, uh, rather than relying on these undemocratic means. But the very fact the fantasy which I'm channeling in this book, To Kill the President, exists is because there is such frustration that those elected office holders are not doing their duty. And Coulter, do you think there's a real thing <clears throat> That, that, that is the deep state, and do you think there's a real conspiracy? Um, well, I think the book sounds very realistic, other than the reluctantly part. Um, the Democrats have been trying to impeach Trump since before he was sworn in and coming up with arguments for it. Um, we know that, that intelligence services in the U.S. are leaking right and left. Um, I mean, for example, recently, the conversations with, that, that the president had with the presidents of Mexico and Australia, even, you know, members of the Obama administration are saying, whoa, this should not be done. I happen to like the content of the conversations, but that's not the kind of thing that ought to be leaked. Um, we never really get anything good from our intelligence services. It would be one thing if, you know, they predicted 9-11 um, or they saw anything coming ever. But, but our CIA is utterly useless. It's been stripped of powers. It's just a bunch of lawyers undermining political figures they don't like. And boy, are we seeing that with Trump. So I think they ought to just shut down the CIA and root them all out, hopefully with some prosecutions for the leakers. But, but are these just sort of anti-Trump people in the establishment who are trying to slow him down? Or do you think there's a genuine conspiracy to remove him? Because that's the, you know, the, the belief, it seems, of his former national security adviser. Well, I don't think it's much of a conspiracy, if that's what it is. They're certainly not keeping it quiet. It's been written in nearly every <laughs> magazine. Half of the Democrats. We have, you know, Donald Trump's... Uh, opponent in the presidential election, Hillary Clinton, has announced she's joined the resistance. I mean, I've never seen so, much, so many attacks on, on a president. Um, but it doesn't seem to slow him down. Uh, Jonathan Friedland, 
I mean, are these people the enemies of democracy or not? It's a bit confusing, isn't it? When it is confusing. The started support. I think their motivation is a, a democratic motivation. They want to preserve the democratic order which they feel is threatened. Their by, democracy. By, no, but it's a wholly unusual figure here. You have a president who doesn't observe the usual political conventions, even democratic liberal norms and, and the conventions that have held the peace and preserved the society. And they, the, these are very unusual leaks. And Ann Coulter's right that they didn't happen before. They didn't happen under George W. Bush either. You can't put a party label on them. These are people who feel this man is an unusual, direct menace good people, to the republic. In your view. And they're good people who are very professional, whose loyalty is to the Constitution. America's not a monarchy. Their loyalty is to the country, not to the man. And people like Ann Coulter want them to swear some kind of loyalty to Tsar Donald. They don't. They have loyalty to the country and to the rest of the world in terms of the safety of the world, now imperiled by a man threatening nuclear confrontation. Uh, Ann Coulter, these people are patriots. Um, I think that's a little hysterical. I mean, it's one thing to be... Um, quivering about Donald Trump as a fascist before he came into office. But since he's come into office, he tried to fulfill one of his major, one of two or three of his major campaign promises with the temporary ban on uh, immigration from certain terrorist-producing Muslim countries, quite a modified version of, of his more boisterous claims during the campaign. Court said no. And he said, OK, we'll appeal it. That is abiding by democratic methods. But let's talk um, about today's when crisis. When he calls on... Well, you know, which is North pardon? Korea. Let's talk about today's crisis, though. I mean, you know, we, we, well, okay, we appear to be on the okay, brink. But before we get to North Korea, before we get to North Korea, let's not pretend that just because you don't like a guy's policies, oh, he's not abiding by democratic norms. He is quite clearly abiding by democratic norms. Democratic norms that, by the way, President Obama didn't abide but by. But we're on the brink of nuclear war, if you believe some people. Oh, please. No, so, I think that's crazy. Talk so about do you support hysterical. him on North, North Korea? North Korea can't even get a missile off the ground. <laughs> In which case, why is Donald Trump threatening them so egregiously? He seems to suggest they pose a mortal threat to the United States, and that's why he's upping the ante. The people who know about nuclear strategy know that with this, you don't do bluff and bluster. This is not The Apprentice, you know, where you talk about the finals and we're moving into the finals, some a phrase that Donald Trump used yesterday. You speak carefully, you ratchet down, you do not increase the tension. And this is why people, generals, military people and others, who know the fragility, the delicacy with which you have to handle the nuclear uh, situation are so, so fearful that they are resorting to, yes, pretty extreme methods by leaking these things out, hoping they can somehow put the brakes. It falls on those people who have the democratic power to restrain this president to use it, and so far they haven't. Uh, and Coulter, what we're also seeing is the beginning of democratic attempts to stop the president having the power to use nuclear weapons preemptively. Um, I, I'm not really worried about Donald Trump using nuclear <clears throat> weapons preemptively. Um, I think it's fantastic that, that President um, Kim Jong-un thinks he can out-trash-talk Donald Trump. Um, no, I think Trump is going to win that one. Uh, again, North Korea can't even get a nuke off the ground. Um, and, and part of what t President Trump ran on was, was to end these endless, pointless wars. Um, as for his policies, I'd really prefer... I prefer for him to get back to the things he ran on, which is ending these crippling trade deals and, and enforcing our immigration laws. Um, but, you know, trash-talking the, the head of North Korea, the crazy dictator, no, that's actually but, but kind of But just answer Jonathan's that point, which we is... We have a president so good at trash-talk. Well, well, but as Jonathan says, you know, if you're, if, if you're really relaxed about North Korea because they can't even get a missile properly delivered... What is Donald Trump getting so worked up about? Why is he threatening a nuclear war? Um, well, to the contrary to Jonathan, I think what you want is for crazy dictators not to get their hands on nuclear reactors and, you know, nuclear fuel, which, oh, that's right, President Bill Clinton gave um, North Korea in 1994 in the great peace deal hailed as peace in our time um, in return for no weapons inspections for five years. Of course, North Korea broke the agreement, instantly went to work manufacturing nukes. That does pre present a little bit of a problem. Um, but sometimes I think, um, particularly here, it, um, I think it's useful to trash talk. North Korea. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of the president's time. It's better that he's trash talking North Korea than his own attorney general. Anne Coulter, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, Jonathan Friedland, uh, truth stranger than fiction it, in this case. It does <laughs> seem like it. I mean, this was, as I say, written, written before these events, but events are making this fiction come true. Thank you very much.